Today, we're going to be um, taking a little tour of my um, sideboard. Uh, this is my homeschool organization. This is where I keep all the really important uh, documentation and things that uh, go towards my portfolio, my home end of year um, reporting information. Uh, this stores all of my kind of you know, the curriculum that you want to hold on to for the next child, for the younger child, the younger sibling to do, um, unit studies that I've put away. This stores a whole lot of stuff and I'm going to show you how I store it and the fact that I love, the, the things that I love about this storage solution. Um, so join me for the tour. My name is Tiffany and this is Hinterlife Homeschool. My channel is all about motherhood, homeschooling and organization. And I am passionate about child-led learning and creating uh, um, a homeschooling lifestyle. When I first started homeschooling, I was a little overwhelmed with the sheer amount of paper a homeschool can have just in one year, let alone three or four like we have been doing. Um, and it gets a little intense. I was trying to think, you know, where the heck am I going to keep all this stuff and do I need to keep it all? And I was, it took me a really long time to figure out a system in which that I was happy to keep certain things, what that criteria was and how I went about keeping all of that. Um, so today's video is actually covering a large portion of that organization in terms of paper, how I organize our paper. Um, that includes all of our registration documents, um, portfolios, and all of those kinds of things. I'm going to take you through our cupboards first. So our, my sideboard has two cupboards and then three drawers down the center. I think it's a fairly traditional layout in terms of sideboards. I really like it. Um, and I think it gives, you know, especially when it comes to sideboard, I love this one because a lot of the shelves in the ones that I had looked at were not adjustable and that does not work. I and learning very quickly that I need adjustable shelves because I really like to change things up a lot in terms of where I keep things. So adjustable shelves are a major thing for me. Um, and that's not just for sideboards, it's also, also for like bookshelves and things like that too. If they're adjustable, they're a winner for me. Okay, so in the first cupboard that I've got here, my printer, uh, it's, I really like this printer. It does a really good quality printing, not that I print a lot. Um, it does the job and I find that it also, you know, it, it faxes, it photocopies, it does all the things, but it's actually fairly compact for a printer. Um, and I really like that as well. Uh, so if I, this is not a proper, like this is not traditional wood. This is just wood veneer. So there is just like a stapled on backing to this sideboard. That was also something that I knew I would need because I wanted to hide all the ugly cord things through the back of the sideboard. So um, I just pulled out a couple of the staples um, at the back of the sideboard to fit the, um, to fit the power cord uh, through. Uh, and I've got a PowerPoint literally behind this wall, so it works really, really well. Uh, so that's the printing section. But then I've also got uh, a basket above the printer and that is for um, essentially for me to file. So it's finished book work. It's finished books. So it's essentially the books that have been filled up with work for this homeschooling year. And that's wonderful. And I, I generally, as we do that, it's usually, you know, when we're in amongst a lesson and things and I need somewhere to put it instead of just kind of putting it on a surface and forgetting about it, I have a designated space to put it so I can think about what I need. Um, it's a fairly, you know, substantial space. So it's never going to fill up, which is great. And I can figure out what things I want to pull out, put into as, as samples if I want anything. Um, and it's just there waiting for me when I have a rainy day where we've kind of finished early and I've got a space and time where I'm comfortable to just go through all that. The very next thing beside the basket is actually um, some plastic containers 
and they hold, um, so there's one each for, for my children, and that is literally our capacity to hold their artwork. So we are a very arty family. We love, we're always, you know, the kids are always drawing, the kids are always creating some beautiful pieces and things. So that is our container for, for holding that because often it is on loose paper. They'll grab a loose paper, they love it. Um, I've tried to get them to use books because I do prefer them to use books, but they just love paper. So, you know, we're working on it. That's okay. That's their, that's a preference. I try to facilitate that as much as possible. I also try and encourage them to use it on recycled paper and, and things that, you know, the printer might have not printed properly or, you know, um, sometimes my husband brings home recycled paper from work and things like that. Um, but that is, that is kind of their preference. So we roll with that as much as we can. And um, in the instances that we, we generally, they will lose loose paper. That's why I try to keep them with a book. But um, this keeps quite a substantial amount of uh, paper. And I like that. And once that is full, it's up to them to go through and work out what they want to keep, what they don't want to keep, what they want to finish. Because often it's half, half, in, you know, half finished project or things like that that they were just, you know, getting ideas out of. Um, and sometimes they go through it and they take out all of it and go, oh, I don't need any of that anymore. That's fine. I've done this, this, and this now, um, and that's all good. And sometimes they want to keep all of it, and so we just need to just kind of figure out what to do next. Um, we haven't actually filled it up where they've gone, I want to keep it all. So we haven't, we haven't stumbled on that yet, but it just gives us a capacity limit. It gives us where, where we're not accumulating too much stuff. That's my aim is, you know, if they ever came to me and said, mom, you can't throw that away. I would never do that to them. Like, that's not what I'm about. Um, but I am trying to get us to become res more responsible for our things. And that includes, you know, paper. Um, paper can really be a, a big stressor in a family. I know because it, that's how I felt um, and this is how I control that. Um, so yeah, uh, the next thing is our filing cabinet. So I'm not going to show you the personal stuff in this because that's, that's too personal to show. But it is um, essentially, our, I do it by year and everything that is relevant to the homeschooling year is in here. Um, and then I've also got some medical things in there as well. So it's essentially just for my kids. We have our own filing cabinet, or not cabinet, a filing solution, I should say, for our office, which is for our business stuff and our home uh, things as well. So this is essentially dedicated space for filing for um, our kids and homeschooling. So on the other side of my um, drawers in this cupboard, I had some clipboards and um, manila folders and bits and pieces like that. So that's where I keep all of those things. Clipboard, I also have like a little blackboard and um, just some just some random little file, like uh, storage solutions for, for paper if I ever need them. Again, beside it, I've got some, a couple of manipulatives, uh, just some random ones that I, you know, don't want to get rid of, but I uh, just want to store for a little while. Um, and I've also got like a little, a mini blackboard and just some, some writing tools and things. The next one along, I've got some puzzles and puzzles are huge in our house and they're gradually taking over my storage that I had dedicated to puzzles. So this is my solution at the moment. I've taken them out of their boxes. I know a lot of people will hate that I did that. I don't do that to games, but I do do it to puzzles because I think puzzles don't take that much space up. Well, shouldn't <laughs> and boxes are we're not going to get like we're not going to be able to resell our puzzles they're not really worth that much um so i would just rather gift them to people in which case they're not going to care if i kept the box or not um i cut out the picture that's on the box and i stick it to the plastic zip um packet that it's dedicated to and i generally keep two puzzles in one zap like one of those zip plastic um cases so that works really well for us and the kids love it that way actually because it's a lot easier to put away um so then i've got uh our our binders so i've got one binder which is a portfolio binder and that is actually um that holds really just kind of any print out printed out portfolio stuff i'll 
um, government authority has switched to online reporting. So that's fantastic. But um, previously to that, it was always paper. So that's why I have that folder because it was always paper. So I would tend to print out my reports through freely, freely and post them, post them off. Um, so I did last year's because freely, we had freely up and working and, and doing all that reporting capabilities. Uh, and this year it's going to be strictly online. So um, I am going to be doing that within the next four weeks. So I will probably do a video if you're interested to see how easily I do my reporting because it is simply just a couple of steps of putting together the work that I've already done throughout the year including all my observation notes. So it's like a five minute job to do my reporting and portfolio work now, which is huge. <laughs> um, to anyone that has done those reports for Queensland, they know they, they're pretty extensive. And um, I've worked towards, you know, eliminating that stress in reporting. So I will definitely be doing a video covering that um, and how I use Freely Homeschool Planner app to achieve that as well. The next one is my curriculum folder. That is literally, that does not hold curriculum that we use. That is holding curriculum that we have used in the past couple of years um, that I may want to reuse with my daughter because she is the younger one and I've done most of that curriculum with my son. But uh, Riley, she has always been with us whenever we've done school. So she is familiar with most of it, um, but I'm not yet ready to give it away or well, I don't give it away, but you know, be, be done with it. Um, so I just held it in here because I always think that sometimes we just go around in circles and we want to go deeper in the actual information that we just covered uh, in previous years. So that's always good to hold on to it for now. Um, but most of the curriculum that I now have is PDF. So it's not too extensive, but anything that I've printed out, I like to try and keep because I hate wasting paper. Um, so it goes into that folder if I think or suspect that I may reuse it again in the future. And the next folder, uh, the next two folders uh, I'm not going to show you. Uh, they're just uh, Riley and Isaac's uh, kind of medical um, information in terms of like we have a lot of therapist things that we go to and they usually need referencing and, and information and bits and pieces and I get paperwork. So I usually end up taking the folder and then I just put it into the folder then and there and it's just so much easier. So um, that that is just what I grab when we have appointments and it's just nice and easy. It's very um, accessible. So above that, I have this cute little, I think it's called a storage cube because it separates out the things that I really need often, um, which is my little plastic slip cases, um, my label stickers, and um, my le laminating pouches as well. And of course, paper. Um, so this is where the kids go to get paper when they wanna do all their drawing and art and bits and pieces. Um, so yeah, I, I tend to keep it in here. And obviously there's room, uh, I'm due to buy a couple more things of, um, things of paper as well. So I will keep paper uh, just to the side of this, um, this holder as well. So the top drawer is essentially just all of my things that I need straight away when I've gotten uh, something that I need to fill out, something that I need to file away, put dates on, things like that. So I've got my stapler, my hole puncher, those are the kinds of things that I generally use a lot of. Um, always in need of a ruler. Um, we also have our timer. This is a 10 minute timer, which comes in handy um, because that's usually you know, in 10 minutes, we'll do this. So I put the timer out just for a visual. Um, and then I've got just obviously pens and bits and pieces. Uh, and then I keep my, my ink refills in this drawer as well. So just all the handy accessible stuff. Um, and then I've got in the second drawer, I've got our manipulatives, mostly math manipulatives. Actually, I think it's all math manipulatives, yeah. Um, so we've got our magnetic uh, coins for counting and, you know, kind of sciencey stuff as well. Um, yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. We really do love having uh, rocks and uh, gemstones as counters. That is kind of one of our favourite things to use when we're doing manipulatives. Um, but then we also have, obviously, uh, 
the uh, base 10 block range as well. Then in our bottom drawer, we have um, kind of just some things that I came up with uh, over the last couple of years, really. It's just a mixture. I've held on to them all because obviously I've got a younger learner as well and she's going to want to use those things as well. Um, but really fun little games and things that we can use during morning time if we want. Um, we've got story cubes. We've got you know, uh, a couple of math things as well for games in terms of, you know, playing games and things. We've got problem solving cards. We've got um, just some funny little signs that they can post up if I were wanting to play a game. We usually do like, I'll say something outrageous and they'll either, they can pick, you know, strongly disagree, disagree, strongly agree or agree um, and they get to like work together in, in what they what they what their answer would be to that. Um, I've got our affirmation cards. So we use the Insight Mind affirmation cards. They're really lovely. Uh, and then, yeah, just got some um, laminated. I tend to laminate all these kinds of things that I think we're going to keep. Um, and these are kind of just like uh, you roll it, write it, count it, which is really great um some time sheets and then the spelling um roller word uh is really really fun as well the kids really love that um it's just great for re revision of things thank you for joining me in this video i hope that maybe it might have helped you see that you know sorry solutions don't need to be necessarily um in the formal sense it doesn't need to be like a filing cabinet or you know, uh, a specific desk or work desk or, you know, part of the office or anything like that. It doesn't have to, school doesn't have to look like a school, a classroom. We don't have to do those things if we don't want to. Um, we can think outside the box. Anything that can hold things can hold your, your home school. Um, you can use different pieces of furniture and put them together in an eclectic way. Um, and that can be your home school. So it's what works best for you. That's, that's what this channel is all about. It's, you know, it's what works for your family and you don't go and have to go and spend a fortune in, in doing so as well. So this is my out of the box way of keeping on top of all of our paper. This is what really does help me. And I find I, every time I open it up, I'm grateful for the work that I've done to kind of keep it in the way that it is because it is just so reassuring to be able to, you know, before a hospital appointment, go and grab that, that file. And it's so easy. It's accessible. I've got everything in it. And I know that. And that is so reassuring. And, you know, to be able to comfortably know that we've got all of the things that we need to do and we know when they need to be done is very reassuring. But, but please know that's not how it's always been for me. And it has been a journey of, of learning what I need to do and how I need to do it and making all those really disastrous mistakes, to be honest, um, in, in teaching me to, to be better and to do better in, in this kind of organization game. Um, it is challenging. It's hard to keep on top of it. It's hard to find the motivation. It's not fun. <laughs> I don't find this stuff fun, but the value that it brings us as a family and me as a mum and um, a home educator, it, it is 110% worth the effort. And um, once you've done it and all you need to do is maintain it, it's just a, a weight lifted off my shoulders and I don't have to worry about it anymore. And I'm proud of it. I'm proud of the effort that I've put in to create what I've done um, and be able to maintain that. And for anyone else to come in and be able to maintain it and see what is where, where everything is. You know, if anything should happen to me, I know that everyone knows where everything is. So if I'm in the hospital or something happens and I'm unwell, Someone can come in and they know where all the documentation is, all the important, really important information that they need access to for our kids, for our kids' health, our kids' education, all of those kinds of things. So thank you. I really do appreciate you staying till the end. If you have, I'm really grateful. 
Um, I would like to invite you to, if you did enjoy this video, to like it. It really helps my channel and it lets me know to make more things like this as well. Um, and if you haven't already, I'd love it if you could subscribe and hit that notification bell and then that way you don't miss anything in the future as well. So thanks again, guys. I'll see you in the next video.